So now let's take a look at a VRS multiply model. Um, the the previous um, CRS envelopment model is equivalent to uh, the CRS uh, multiply model. Now we've talked about the VRS envelopment model. So what is the equivalent model to that? And here I present that uh, the two models in there. One is for input orientation, and the other one is for output orientation. Now the Please note that in the input oriented model, the VRS multiply model, which is equivalent to the VRS invite model, in a sense that you get the same efficiency score here. The efficiency score is right here. Here, uh, I, but you looking at the up, if you look at the objective function, the objective function you actually try to maximize the outputs. Okay, the weighted outputs. Uh, just take a note that this is the uh, the output orientation model, and in this case, you actually try to minimize the uh, the weighted input. So the notion of input orientation and output orientation, in my opinion, are based upon the invariant model. Okay, if you were to do this uh, for the multiply model, here you would say, okay, this in this case you actually try to maximize the output. But since we have the notion of input orientation and output orientation from the invariant model, uh, and these models are equivalent, okay, that this model is equivalent to the input oriented VIS invariant model. So we just use the input orientation in here. And and in here I uh, I also would like to point out that you have this variable which is called free in sign. Now we've talked about that all the decision variables are non active in the sense either uh, greater than zero or equal to zero. Free in sign in the sense that it can be negative. Now how do you do this uh, in the spreadsheet? Is that you will have to reserve uh, two cells in a spreadsheet. So you reserve two cells uh, in the spreadsheet for this one single variable, okay? And this single variable is equal to the um, equal to one cell uh, minus the other one. In that way, um, you can get uh, either positive, negative, or zero because this is what we call the uh, the variable that's free inside can be uh, either be positive, negative, or zero, and and you can you can uh, cannot do it by only using one cell in the spreadsheet uh, and have that cell be either a positive, negative, or zero ones. Everything has to be non-negative in the spreadsheet. Um, but when you subtract one cell from the other one, uh, sometimes depends on the the optimal uh, solutions you can get a positive, negative, or zero value. So, uh, what I my suggestion is to take a look at a spreadsheet that provided with the book, and you will know what I was uh, I'm talking about. Now, if you um, recall in chapter three, uh, we derived the, the CIS model, uh, multiplier model, from the uh, the perspective of efficiency ratio. It's the aggregate output divided by the aggregate uh, input. Now, so now we have this VRS multiplier model. What is the efficiency ratio under the VRS? And this is the um, the ratio model, the efficiency ratio model that you were talking about. Still, you have the aggregate, uh, the output, but you have this uh, one extra item here, which is free inside can either be positive or negative, and this is the uh, the ratio for a particular DMU under evaluation, and that you have a set of uh, ratios for all the uh, DMUs. Now let's take a look at you know what does does this ratio mean to you? Uh, let's say you only have one input and one output, so you immediately have this um, simple form, you know, one output, one input, and if you you know would change this, and you can get x y equals to a x plus b, where you know a is equal to you know uh, v one divided by u one, and b is you know uh, is equal to this. Um, now as you can see. This is a line, okay? This is the intercept. Uh, this is the slope. So uh, you know that's why if you look at this uh, from um, frontier VRS frontier, if you extend the line up here, you get a uh, intercept here. You get a negative one, okay? If you extend this line over here, you get an intercept here, which is positive, positive one, and that. Uh, the free and sign variable actually um, gives you an indication where are you on the frontier, whether you're on this part, which uh, if you, in the book there's a chapter that talks about uh, return to scale. Um, if you are on this line, that means you have an increasing return to scale. If you're in here, that means you're on a decreasing uh, return to scale.